Hey everyone, it's Joe from GreenlightSound.com, and today we've got part two of a mixing with Fab Filter series. And if you didn't catch part one, I'll put a link in the description down below. But basically, the premise of this series is that very few plug-in companies support Apple's new M1 chip and Big Sur operating system, but Fab Filter is one of the first to come out and offer support there. So it's one of the few third-party plug-in manufacturers that you can actually use if you get a new Mac. So I thought. I'm going to limit myself to using only FabFilter plugins and go through an entire mix using them and see what results we get. Part one was drums. Part two here is going to be bass. So let's start out by taking a look at the bass part we've actually got here. And the first thing we'll notice is there's a bunch of bass tracks. We've got a bass DI. We've got a bass Sansamp track where the DI is run through Sansamp and then two bass mic cab tracks. So that's all being subbed down to the bass sub track here. So let's just start by listening to the bass DI by itself first. Here's the Sans Amp track. Some really low level distortion. Speaker tracks combined. So what I often like to do when doing bass processing is to use an EQ to take all the low end information from the DI track, which is really clean, not a lot going on there, and all the upper end information, and when I say upper end, I really mean anything past about 100, 150 hertz or so, and use all that from the speaker tracks where kind of the character of the bass comes in. So we're gonna move Pro-Q3 over here, and I'm gonna do a high pass filter all the way down to, let's say 150 hertz. I'm gonna make this a pretty steep 24 dB per octave filter. So I'm cutting out all that top end and getting only low end information here. On my two speaker tracks, I'm going to just take the same exact instance of Pro-Q and I'll take this. So instead of being a low pass filter, I'll just hit that button. It's now a high pass filter. Drive that over to the other speaker track as well. And now what we're getting is, if I keep this one plug in window open and bring this one back, we're getting all the low end information coming from the DI track nice and clean and all the information passed about 150 hertz or so from the speaker tracks. We're going to deal with that Sans Amp track by itself in just a moment. So now when I combine those together, I'll leave the Sans Amp out. Here's what we get. So we're getting a nice clean low end from the DI and all that character from the speakers. Now the Sans Amp itself, I'm not really loving the Sans Amp track. So what I think I'll do instead here is I'm going to duplicate the DI track here. I'll leave Pro-Q on, but I'll disable that EQ, leave it flat for now. And what I'm going to do is bring in Saturn 2, which is a distortion and saturation plugin from FabFilter. I'm going to go to Amp here. I'm going to go to Crunchy Amp. I'm going to drive this part, but I'm going to make it multi-band here. So I'm going to leave this low band pretty much off. Slide that crossover down to about 120 hertz or so. Now we'll drive this upper band. Try the different amps out. So now what we're going to do is blend in that distorted amp track to the rest. It's a little bit fizzy in the upper range, so what I'm going to do is pull a little bit of that out. And in the context of the rest of the mix, it's going to sound like it cuts through a little bit more by itself. It doesn't really sound so great. So now that I've got my basic mix set up with the bass, I'm going to bring the drums back in here, kind of trying to bring that bass part in so it fits in with the drum mix. And we'll start with some EQ on the bass sub here.
So I'm really just boosting that low end a bit around 168, cutting off the very subby parts, cutting off the top end and cutting a little bit of that upper mid range out. It's already got some bite from that saturation, so I don't need a ton of upper mid range in there. Next, we'll add a little bit of compression here. So we get Pro C2, our compressor, straight onto the bass subtrack. And for this compression, I'm gonna go with like an LA-2A style of compression. So if I go here, I'm gonna pick Opto, optical compressor, that's what an LA-2A is. I'm gonna go for sort of a medium attack and release. It's got a gentle knee compression. It's only about four to one. I'm gonna bring that threshold down until I'm getting a few dB of compression on the bass part. the release in a little bit faster. Just a little bit of control, really not a whole lot going on, but I'm also gonna pair that with another instance of Pro C. This one though, I'm going for a little bit of punch here. I'm going to go with fast attack, kind of fast release. Also bringing the knee a little bit more sharp. I'm going to bring that gain down a little bit. And I'm just getting a little bit of control out of it really by doing a fast compression that's catching some of the transients and then a slow sort of optical style compression that's leveling things out a bit. I'm gonna move to a different part of the bass. Now the last step I'd like to do is bring in Fab Filters Pro MB, which is a multi-band compression plugin. I'll bring that in right over here. I want to create a band at the very bottom end. I'm going to slide that crossover point to about 80 hertz or so. And now what I'm going to do is have this low band triggered by the kick drum. So I'm going to go to the expert panel here. I'm gonna have my side chain here be an external side chain. Then over on the side chain setting here, I'll turn that on, use our kick sub as the input. And now what you're gonna see, I'm gonna dial this in. You're gonna see this compression on the low band of the bass only kick in when the kick is happening. Bring the release faster. And what this does is allows that low end of the kick drum, sort of that 60 hertz range to cut through, but only briefly when the transient's happening by having a really fast attack and release, it kicks in right away and lets go right away. And now what we'll do is add a little bit of kind of room sound to this bass part. So we're gonna to go to Pro R. We're gonna go right off the bat with a preset, small bass room. There we go. Set the mix at 100%. It's on ascend and we'll dial that in. It just creates a small sense of space as if the bass is being recorded in a room. So there it is, some simple EQ compression a little bit of side chaining with the Pro MB and a little bit of reverb to tuck in that bass part to the drum mix we already have going. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next and I'll see you in the next one.